The whole point of malleability is what this guy's doing here, smithing something. So in the olden times when knights would run around and you know fight each other, they'd wear armor. The only reason why you could get armor is because metal that it's, that it's made out of is malleable. If you heat it and then hit it, it will form the right shape. And that was quite an art form back in the medieval history. So to compare the malleability of various elements is our goal. And to classify elements as malleable, brittle, hard or soft. So we want malleable, brittle, hard or soft. What we're going to do is we're going to use lead sinkers, which are like little balls of lead, zinc granules, graphite rods, and we're going to test their malleability by hammering them gently. Gently is the key word here, on a large fiber board with a, with a sort of ball head hammer. Basically, we're just going to hit them and see what happens. And then we can classify them as malleable or brittle, hard or soft. That's how we're going to do this. It's a very quantitative measure, so don't be worried. A lot of chemistry is quanti as qualitative, sorry, not quantitative. This is a qualitative measure. And a lot of chemistry is qualitative. And you don't need to know numbers all the time. And then we're going to repeat this same thing with the ball hammer and the hitting the metal with different gauges of copper wire, so different thicknesses, as well as different gauges of copper sheet. So here we have two gauges of copper wire and sheets of copper to test this thing on as well. So we use wire of various diameters, which is different gauges, and compared to the copper sheeting. So the shape will affect how malleable these things are as well. So we, again, we test the hardness of the copper sheet by hammering it with a ball hammer. So again, typical results. Lead is so often malleable and soft. You can see here the lead pipe on, your, on the far side of me is straight, and then here it's bent, close to me. Lead is often very soft, and you know, when they say you know, hit someone with a lead pipe, often you'll get a bend in the pipe because, not that I've tried it on anyone, because it's such a soft metal, it actually deforms very easily. And so you can see that bend. It will even sag if you leave it for too long. A pipe of lead, so in the olden days we used lead pipe, if you had the pipe going like this when it started, eventually the pipe would sort of sag because the metal was so soft. So over time, the pipe starts to sag, which is an interesting property of lead. Now here we have zinc. Zinc is malleable, but it's harder than lead. So it's harder to shape, it's harder to beat into the correct shape than lead is. Lead is really soft, but zinc is a lot harder, but it's still malleable. Now graphite, if you've ever snapped a pencil in half out of frustration, you'll notice that the graphite is pretty brittle. If you were to hit a graphite rod, it will shatter, and then you'll destroy that rod. So it doesn't do well with stress, it just shatters. The copper wires and copper sheets illustrate the ductility and malleability of copper. Okay, so when we look at the copper wires, they actually show us the properties of copper very well. It's a relatively soft metal, copper, because it's readily shapen, uh, shaped by a ball hammer. You can actually deform it very easily. The copper wire itself shows you how well it can be drawn into wire. If you, look, if you try it, copper can be deformed much more easily than say something like iron. Iron is a very hard substance and it takes a lot of effort to get it to shape correctly. Those are some typical things that you'll see.